Thank you for joining the Coastal Compass Allegedly a Podcast. We have the athletic director from the University of South Alabama, Dr. Joel Erdman. We'll get with him right after this. Dr. Joel, Dr. Erdman, Joel. Joel, Joel. please. Doctor doesn't <laughs> need to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, where are you from originally? I was born and raised in North Dakota. Okay. Um, I went to high school in South Dakota. And uh, my undergraduate went to South Dakota State. So about half half North Dakota, All half right, South yeah. Dakota. And you played ball up there, right? I did. And uh, um, played several sports in high school, a very small country town, farming community. Uh, first love was baseball. Okay. And after receiving my undergraduate degree, I always wanted to teach and coach. And uh, knew that if I wanted to coach baseball, I wanted to get out of the snow. Yeah, no kidding. And so I found my way uh, to California and got a high school uh, teaching coaching job. Okay. And that transitioned into a college job at University of the Pacific. I uh, was there for four years and then met a guy named Steve Kittrell, who used to be the head baseball coach Absolutely, in South yeah. Alabama, yeah. and came to Mobile in the early 90s, kind of blind, had never been, and uh, uh, consider it home, and very fortunate and lucky to be here, uh, transitioning from coaching to administration, leaving and coming back a couple times. Uh, so uh, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate to be here. Roots from the Midwest, but I haven't touched a shovel for about 25 <laughs> years, and I don't plan on doing it again. So, did you get your PhD at South, or? No, I, I earned my master's at South. Okay. And then, uh, long story short, Coach Kittrell knew a gentleman named Mike Martin. Yeah, absolutely. Who was the head coach, head baseball coach at Florida State, and went on to get my PhD in sport management from Florida State. Okay. Uh, and so on and so on. Yeah, I did uh, Martin's baseball camp back in the 80s. Oh, wow. Yeah, a man. tremendous man. <laughs> tremendous was, man. I learned so much in those two weeks down there. It was amazing. Yeah, he was a great coach, great man. Yeah, okay. So uh, you went from coaching into the admin side of it. How do you become the athletic or become a athletic director? And when, when I was a, a student athlete and um, when I was coaching, I – I didn't really know what these athletic directors did, but I noticed them. And uh, in one particular instance, when I was an assistant coach at Pacific in Stockton, California, uh, I made an appointment with the AD, a guy named Ted Leland. And uh, I went and sat down with him and said, if I want to be you someday, what do you recommend I do? And he was a great role model because he went on to be athletic director at Stanford for about 12 years okay. uh, before his retirement. And so he, he gave me some advice and was very generous with his time. And, and then when I came to South, I did the same with Mr. Gottfried, my predecessor. And uh, along the way, I, I, I wanted to teach. I wanted to coach for a while. I loved the game of baseball. But in the back of my head, I, I knew there was a day I think I wanted to do this AD thing. And so along that path, I'd pay attention to what administrators were doing around me, what decisions were made, um, what the culture of a department was, what the expectations of a department was, what the department meant to the campus life or the community life. And when the, the opportunity uh, presented itself, uh, I was able to become an AD. And uh, very grateful for the hundreds of people that helped me along the way. I mean, right. I, I'm not real bright, but <laughs> I do pay attention pretty well, and I, I, I watch people and what they do. While you've been the AD, a lot has happened at oh, South. Wow. And it's unbelievable the just the pace y'all have been on, and y'all are doing a fantastic job. What are you most proud of out there? I, I think, well, not I think, I know um, taking into consideration all the progress, all the transformation, 
all the these things, the bricks and mortar and all the accomplishments competitively, academically, fundraising, wins and losses, et cetera, et cetera. Really, the most important thing is we've maintained a focus on our student athletes yeah. and and making sure, doing our best to stay focused on their experience and their transition from high school to possibly transferring to ensuring they get a college degree that's meaningful for them and and preparing them for a, an adult life, if you will. And some have professional opportunities. Um, most don't in athletics. Right. Uh, but I think we, we, we maintain our focus on the student athlete experience and um, guiding, uh, allowing them to mature and grow. Uh, and along the way, we, we do like to buy rings. We do like to win games. And we do like to serve our community and, and um, try to make our university and our community and our region better in any way we can. All right. So, and look, when South started coming on, I looked at uh, an opportunity for a win for ULM. That didn't last mm -hmm. very long. Y'all surpassed him so mm -hmm. fast. Um, I see the business community reaching out and working with South more so than probably some of the other mid-major or smaller markets. Would you agree? Or is there is there room for growth on there, that? There's always room for growth. Sure. However, you know, I think we in South Alabama athletics are on a trajectory and a path that mirrors the university, that mirrors the city of Mobile and Mobile and Baldwin County yeah. and the Gulf region where the Gulf region, Mobile, Baldwin County, um, the University of South Alabama and Jaguar Athletics, we're all doing our best to capture more of a national profile. And whether it's economic development or, or, or students and graduate students are winning games, we can all capitalize upon each other. We might be located in West Mobile, but you can be assured we promote Baldwin County in our recruiting process. Absolutely. And we yeah. promote the Bay, we promote beaches, we promote climate and weather, we promote the economy. Um, we promote that when we recruit student athletes and prospects, whatever their academic discipline might be, um, if they like this area, if they like this region of the country, there are job opportunities here for them. Oh, I think so. And I think that that is a benefit for us in recruiting the people that we recruit against, we have a great campus, we have great facilities, we have great coaches, we have a great region, and and many of our graduates stay here. And here being the region yeah, the Gulf of Coast South region. Alabama mm -hmm. and Gulf Coast. So uh, I, I want to go back to all the stuff that you've accomplished at USA because there's a there's a, a huge list of brick and mortar th mortar things that you've done and accomplished. But when you go back to the students and bringing in these students, the recruiting part of it, it, how important is the brick and mortar to bring those students in? It's very, it's very important. And it, it, it's sometimes college athletics gets pigeonholed into being overly materialistic and, and, and the, the brick and mortar. Um, but, but the actual truth is brick and mortar are important in chemistry classrooms. They're important in dorms and residence halls. They're important in, in engineering lecture halls. Um, and, and I think our university has done a great job with understanding and embracing that, that people like to be places that are aesthetically pleasing. Oh, absolutely. And they're clean, and they're safe, and it's a fun place to be. Um, and, and due to the good hard work of many, many, many people, um, we, we're kind of in a sweet spot right now. There's always work to be done. And, you know, facilities don't always have to be state-of-the-art, brand new, cutting edge. You can take beautiful structures, keep them clean, put fresh paint on them once in a while, 
uh, put some new flooring down once in a while, and it looks wonderful, and it represents things, and people are proud to have it. So, you know, when 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 maybe we don't have the amount of resources to just build and build and build and build, I think what we do a very good job at campus-wide is really taking care of what we have and making it presentable and making it pleasing to the eye. And you can tell. I mean, the whole yeah. university looks great. It does. And, you know, our, we, we, we do our best to be very mindful of those people. Our grounds department is uh, overseen by a guy named Scott Crow now. And, and, and from every oak tree and pine tree to azalea bush to crepe myrtle to, to flowers, <laughs> whether it's on campus or throughout the health system, you know, at, yeah. the ho at the hospitals and the clinics, uh, that is a group of committed people that really take pride. And um, we hear over and over and over again from when people come to look at campus for the first time, they're really thrown back by the, the, the way it feels, the way it looks, the way it smells. And, and, and that makes a lasting impression. It really yeah. does. I think it's playing off our uh, playing off on the neighborhoods around the university as well. Mm -hmm. You can see that they're getting they're getting nicer. The the property values in those areas are going up. They are um, just like everywhere else. I mean, you, and it's some of those neighborhoods might have been a little rougher thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are cleaning up. That is great to hear. It is, so. and 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 a lot of our alumni that are choosing to stay, um, some of them, not all of them, but, but like to have that proximity to campus because they want to go walking there in the morning or walking in the afternoon or on the weekends, take their dogs. You know, there's great nature trails on campus yeah. that, that some folks don't know about. Um, and, and I think it's, it is when you, you have an affinity for something, you kind of want to be around it. You know, people have an affinity for the, the shorefront here on the on the eastern bay it's beautiful and i can understand why people want to walk on it all the time right. and you know our little corner of the world over in west mobile is that campus and uh it, it is fun to watch people on weekends that just use it as a walking trail and it's miles upon miles upon miles of 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 beautiful place to to take a stroll all right so Tell me about some of the restaurants over in Westmobile that we should be ch checking out. Well, I'm, I'm a little biased, you know, and I have to, uh, my favorite restaurant is, is Tina's Kitchen. That's my wife. That's okay. Honestly, she's, <laughs> she is, she is. I was going to say, best. I've never heard that yeah. one. That's yeah, I was like, she is the best. I, 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 I can't not say that. Um, you know, it, it depends what you're looking for, uh, um, uh, for, for steaks. I mean, Ruth Chris obviously is a wonderful place. Briquettes is a great place. Yep. Uh, um, Mexican Pedro's out. We kind of live out near Sims. We're near Magnolia Grove Golf Course. Yeah. And and that is a great restaurant from a Mexican standpoint. Uh, plenty of barbecue joints. Too many to mention, to be honest with you. Uh, um, Winsel's is a fan favorite if yep. you want some seafood and a little Cajun flair. Uh, um you know, I'm, I'm, I, I hate to start listing them because I'm going to forget them, but sure. Uh, and, and most people, most you know, people say that really. Yeah, most people go, Oh yeah, my gosh. Um, but it is, it's, it's, we're, uh, um, I wouldn't say we're frequent flyer eat out people, but a couple times a month we'll go out and, uh, uh, we like to go downtown on Dauphin street and there's plenty of places to, to choose from down there and, and to have a beverage and something good to eat and have some uh, entertainment uh, is, is enjoyable. We really like that, that piece of culture in our, our community. All right. You know, I never see that there's a downtime for an AD, right? Yeah. I, I think that probably, you know, I would think, oh, his, his busiest, busiest day is probably homecoming at a, at a USA game. But it's never a downtime because you are co constantly talking with people, whether it's a capital investment, students, whatever it is, it, 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 there's there is no off season for the ad there there really isn't it's just it changes cycles 
um, the football season, which is somewhat demanding, uh, has such a rhythm to it that you kind of get used to it. Um, and the the from a just a an abundance of of games all colliding at the same time, the 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 busiest time of year from that perspective is February, especially here in the Deep South, where we can play golf in February, we can play baseball, softball, track and field, tennis, spring football is starting to wind up, basketball is heading to the postseason. So we have a collision of virtually all our sports in February. And from an operational perspective, that's pretty hectic. But, um, you know, they're, they're the, the ever consistent drumbeat is is trying to make friends and to, 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 to talk to people about take a look, to talk to people about if you've not been for a couple decades, I think you'd like coming over here and seeing this. And um, every one of us is a recruiter. Every one of us is a salesperson. Every one of us can set the tone. And that is the constant drumbeat that regardless of summer, fall, winter, spring, all of us have to be on. And uh, every person is a potential season ticket holder. Every person <laughs> is a potential donor. Always uh, be closing. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and the most important thing we all do is recruit. That, that is the most important thing we do, whether it's prospects for players on teams or, or just people to, to come on in all your responsibility it's not just those things but compliance yeah making sure that baseball's going make yeah. sure i mean compliance has got to be a huge huge deal it is you know it's uh playing by the rules is not an option right you know <laughs> you can't but there's people of, out there that you, you can't control yeah you know and and we i am very fortunate we are very fortunate to have an extremely highly capable administrative team made up of professionals who have a deep value system and they're not afraid to work nights and weekends. Uh, um, and, and they love the university and they respect what we do and how we do it. In addition to that, we have uh, a, a great stable of head coaches and assistant coaches who are the same. They, they each have their own unique way of, of going about their business, but at their core, they're good, solid human beings who are educationally centered. Um, they love to win. They hate to lose. Mm. Uh, um, but they're going to they're gonna keep the car out of the ditch. That's what I say all the time. Let's keep the car out of the ditch. You know, let's not embarrass our people. And, and, and if you're getting into a gray area, slow down, stop, make a call, and just say, I'm in a gray area here. What do I need to do? Don't, don't be one of those trudge forward, and I'll ask for forgiveness later, because that can get very damaging if that ever happens in the wrong context. So you're right. Whether it's following the rules, um, uh, selling, uh, um, from a medical standpoint, the health and well-being of our student athletes and our staff, you know, um, sports medicine, um, uh, exercise science, mental health and well-being, um, you know, pulling out of COVID, just the abundance of attention on are our kids okay, mm. and and are they? Let's not take for granted the. The, the daily challenges that that might be a bit a little more challenging for some people um, for whatever reason. So, um, but that's what makes it so rewarding is you work with great people and you serve great student athletes and you win championships along the way. And it's, it's, it's very, very rewarding. Well, we, we, you know, we have to get into it, right? The, the, the announcement that was made in January about major apple white, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I remember him at Alabama. I remember him Texas. at Houston. Yeah, yeah he, he worked for Mac Brown. Well, he was the quarterback. He was the quarterback. That's yeah. true. So, uh, you know, how excited is that 
to to move him up from OC to the head coach. It, you know, it it was one of those those um, instances where you've got to you can't move too fast and make inappropriate decisions. You you've got to be calculated. You can't move with emotion. You got to slow down a little bit. But at the same time, this was a perfect example of let's not overthink this thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. Major is right there. Uh, he's he is a great human being uh, who who is a proven coach, who has the respect of our student athletes, who is uh, who's his value system and our value system as a department, and me as an AD align very well, um, and and so. We're we're very excited to have him. We're 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 thankful that he accepted the offer. Uh, he has assembled a very good staff that are well, you know, similar minded to him, but different enough to make everything better. Uh, uh, but he's I, I think we're going to have a lot of fun, and I think he he is a a, a workhorse who's who's very matter of fact, but a, at the core. A a, uh, a a well-natured, humorous man that that has a great wit to him, um, but I I he he loves football. He loves the game of football, and he knows how to be successful in football. And so we're very excited. Next season will be here right around the corner, so yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be a great year for y'all. Mm-hmm. If you if you had a magic wand, you could change anything. Nil, the mayor of Mobile. <laughs> um, what would it be? That's a great question. That's a loaded question. <laughs> and, um, and, 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 and I loaded it with yeah. nil. You gotta, yeah. be, you gotta be careful well, too. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah. I'd say you know the name, image, and likeness. Nil at the core of what it's supposed to be. It's it's great. It it's got, absolutely beautiful. It's you know it, it used to be before NIL existed three four years ago. If a um, if a student athlete uh, wanted to to was a musician on the side and wanted to record some songs and sell them, they couldn't do that. Right, ridiculous. And so now. You, at, at the core of name, image, and likeness is a student athlete, not a prospect, a student athlete um, um, in exchange for actual work performed, paid on a real market value, however that market value is right. determined, um, can get paid for actual services rendered. And that, that's beautiful. What's wrong with that? There is nothing wrong with that. If, if that same person can play a guitar and cut eight tracks and put it out on Spotify or however that works and sell it, they should be able to do that. And if they can make two grand a week doing it, that's fan. That's, that's, and it doesn't distract from their team obligations and their classroom obligations. I'm all for it. Um, where we're we're in this kind of never never land is the you know our in my humble opinion we we're humans we just can't help ourselves sometimes and um, is it really payment for for work actually performed at a market rate etc cetera, etc cetera. in some instances yes but maybe in some instances no. And um, is the influence of a collective or organizing body that's kind of overstepping its bounds? We have a great collective at South Alabama called Jags Impact, which is driven by a bunch of really great professional ethical people, and they're doing it the right way, and we can be very proud of that. Um, and and they're like as with anything, people get competitive, and when sure. they get competitive. Things get a little out of control, however you want to define that. Oh, I was going to pick on SEC <laughs> boosters, but. but well, and but it, it's here, yeah. 
Yeah. And and you, we've got to embrace it. And and you know, I I talk to fans almost daily who are a little old school that just don't like it, and this mm-hmm. is killing college athletics, and I don't like it anymore. They preferred the duffel bag yeah, full yeah, of money. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, but I respect that, but this this is good. The way we're doing it is good, and if you'd like to get involved, you can. If you want, if you want to have the starting shortstop over for a a, a birthday party for your grandchild and pay him five hundred bucks, you can do that. That's completely within the letter and the spirit of how this works. Well, most of us that weren't student athletes, we all had jobs. Yeah. I mean, we worked our way through these guys and girls. And some uh, and some had scholarships and still worked. See, that's oh, that's yeah. the thing oh, yeah. that the NIL was, I think, supposed to help out was even though you have a scholarship, you still get money on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it seems to me some of this is like a slush fund. Where, where they're paying people not to do anything. Like, I remember when when uh, the boy that played for 100 years at Auburn and then went up to Oregon, uh, whose name shall remain nameless, <laughs> Bo Nix. But anyway, you know, he, he got that first deal with Milo's, right. and he actually did ads for Milo's. But I think, like you're saying, sometimes it's not necessarily them doing the work, but getting the money. And it's it's interesting. You're, you're, we're, we're in a, a catch-22 loop where our governing body, the NCAA, we would like them to control things a little more. But then when things are controlled, lawsuits come out and and yeah. screams of antitrust and you can't limit things. And so you you do we're 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 in this this circular issue where we can't get out. And um, I do think Charlie Baker, the, the head of the NCAA, for about a year, year and a half now, I believe, is is doing the best he can in just a tough situation. I mean, I don't envy him at all. I respect him. I don't envy him. How long How long does the NCAA have long to live with you know, the realignment if, if, and everything? That That's a great question. And, and the kind of the in vogue answer is it needs to go away. It's antiquated. I don't. I don't think. Well, it seems a, like I don't a, think it needs to be the Wild no, Wild West. No, no. But you, if you are always going to need a governing body of some sort, in whatever shape or form. Um, so whatever our governing agency is currently doing, if it stops doing that, there's going to need to be another governing agency created somehow. Mm-hmm. And will that agency? or association oversee all championships for all sports or will the sports now have their own governing agencies so you have them with sports specific or certain clusters of sports um and you know all that is great fodder for conversation and um but the devil is really in the details when, when, when you kind of shut the door and get a collection of people behind that closed door and say, okay, what if, what, what if that happens? Well, who's in charge now and how is that going to work? And if people are supposed to abide by 30 rules, who's going to, keep people in check right. mm-hmm. and who's going to verify eligibility and who's going to verify financial aid and, or are we just going to throw everything to the wind and um, look at a club system like in, like is in Europe, which I don't think that's our desires either. Yeah. yeah th- and this is a overgeneralization, but in, in Europe you have universities and then you have clubs that play basketball and clubs that play volleyball and clubs that play but they're not affiliated with the but they're they're, not. They're, they're they're not affiliated with the yeah. university and you know i just think in our american culture we're all used to this university plays this sport what and we really love it right it's really cool and if that would ever fracture i just i 
I, I just don't see that. I just don't think that meets our our needs as as a society. Yeah. Well, have we missed anything, Joel, that you wanted to bring up today? Uh, no, I I just I really appreciate you all uh, doing this and having it's not me, Joel Erdman. It's having the University of South Alabama and its athletic director here. It's it's very nice oh, to be able to thank, oh, thank we you. We appreciate so much it. For coming on. Yeah, we do. Yeah. It means a lot to us. And uh, and you know, as we're growing our stuff, it, it's it's nice to have. Uh, great people come on like yourself and help us out. So we appreciate that. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. All right, guys, that'll do it for this episode. Please like, follow, subscribe, or like, subscribe, um, hit that notification bell. That's what it is. Anyway, Coastal Compass, allegedly a podcast. See you on the next one.